it all starts with just one voice that takes a stand, that makes a choice to live for God and not hesitate to tell the world. Somehow breaks through where there was one, there now stands two, and soon another takes his hand. A ray of hope that spreads across the land, across the mountains, across. Appreciate that uh, good song, that video by, or you didn't see the video, but the uh, uh, the song by Avenue Trio, good friend of ours, Casey Kemp and Avenue. They've been at the church before, uh, of course, Casey down in Nashville, and um, we appreciate uh, their music and getting to share that this morning. Uh, Valentine's Day uh, 2021, uh, kind of unusual Valentine's Day to fall on Sunday, uh, but uh, this is the Valentine's Day broadcast today. Uh, uh, out because of the ice and uh, I think we had a low of uh, seven here this morning I think it's all the way up to 11 now so uh, kind of a heat wave coming and of course the forecast for more snow today so uh, uh, everybody stay safe uh, stay warm uh, if you need anything uh, this afternoon's the time to get it um, if you need any help be sure and uh, let me know uh, and if I can't get to you I'll find somebody in the church that can uh, make sure that we get needs met. Make sure you got groceries and prescriptions and all that in before this next round hits. Um, Valentine's Day. Uh, so we're going to be looking at Romans uh, chapter 5 as our main scripture today. If you want to be turning in your Bibles to the book of Romans, uh, Romans chapter 5, talking about uh, uh, on the, the theme of Valentine's Day, talking about love, where love, uh, uh, the, the, the origination of love. Of course, that's God and his love for us. But before we get into the the scripture today and, and talk about our, our message today. 
Uh, let's go to the Lord in a time of prayer. Uh, as we pray, we certainly want to remember to pray for, uh, as we have been, uh, remembering our, our community, our church, our country. Uh, continue to pray for COVID. Praise the Lord. The numbers in, in, in Kentucky uh, are coming down. Uh, we praise the Lord for that. Perhaps winter has a part to play in that. Uh, so we're we're thankful for that, but still a, a battle to deal with. And so we want to continue to pray for that. Also be thinking about um, uh, as uh, you know, springs around the corner and uh, we'll be back in church very soon. And we're uh, gearing up for our gospel to every home, uh, partnering with our sister churches in the association and uh, the Kentucky Baptist Convention, trying to reach all of the one point eight million homes uh, in Kentucky. And so you'd be praying for uh, our church, our sister churches, as we uh, endeavor to, to reach our neighbors, uh, to just let them know that uh, the church is here to, to serve them, the church is here to, to pray for them, to meet their needs. Uh, the, the church, we, we, we want to be relevant uh, in our community. We want to be uh, good neighbors. And uh, uh, so we're going to be trying to uh, get this effort going, the gospel to every home with, along with our sister churches. And so uh, a part of that, we want to uh, hopefully, uh, the plans are to try to have some type of a, um, a revival emphasis at the end of that as we look toward the fall. So you'd be praying about that as well. Uh, and if you have prayer requests this morning, we've had some uh, in the church that uh, ha have had sickness, some that have had some surgeries that have had to be put off because of the weather. And uh, so we want to continue to remember those, the many on our prayer list. And if you have a need, uh, just um, either private message me, text me that, uh, or if you want to share it here in the comments, go ahead and put that need on there, and uh, we'll be sure that we remember those as, as we pray also. Well, let's go to the Lord in time of prayer right now. You uh, join with me as we pray. Father, we thank you for this uh, Lord's Day. God, we thank you for uh, Valentine's Day, God, to remind us, uh, God, to uh, uh, pause, and, and uh, God, sometimes we just take things for granted, and Father, we we don't need to do that. And so, Father, this is another time for us in our relationships to uh, uh, to stop, uh, to take inventory, to reflect and uh, uh, think about things. And so, Father, we're, we're thankful, those of us that uh, have family members, uh, uh, God, those that have friends, uh, those that love us, God, just uh, you created us uh, to be in relationship. And uh, so, Father, we appreciate that. And, and God, as we think this morning, uh, of our community. God, as we think of our church, uh, we think about those around us. God, those that uh, we depend on, those that depend on us. Uh, God, we come to you in prayer. Uh, we lift those up, those uh, fellow uh, family members of the church, uh, our family members. God, perhaps those that uh, are in need of a healing touch. God, in, in the midst of this uh, virus and pandemic, there's those that have uh, prayer concerns with their their job, those that have a financial uh, problems right now. And God, we just lift those, you know, every circumstance, those that have shared the needs and perhaps those that are just carrying a burden privately and, and haven't shared it. God, we, we join our faith together this morning and we just ask on behalf of each one. And then Father, we ask for our time together. God, I know that it's different uh, not being in person for worship, not being together. Uh, but Father, we do thank you for uh, the technology that we have today that we can still uh, come together in this form uh, God, we can, uh, as as a, a church, as a community, we can gather around your word. And Father, we're grateful for that. God, we ask as we look into your word that, uh, Father, you would just, uh, as the word reminds us uh, of, of your love for us today, and God, help us to have thankful hearts. Help us to be uh, appreciative and to not take for granted one another, to not take for granted you. Uh, God, sometimes it seems that uh, when life is going uh, good, when life is easy, when we're on the mountaintop, uh, we tend to take things for granted. And in that time, we tend to forget uh, sometimes the things that are most important. God, help us uh, to not do that, but to be thankful for uh, those around us, those that uh, are, are part of our lives. And then God, help us to always be mindful of your love, your grace for us, your gift of Christ and the offering of salvation. And God, what all that means to us, we're so thankful for that today. God, we love you. We thank you. We commit this time together into your hands. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. As I said, we're going to be looking at the book of Romans, chapter number five. Romans, chapter number five, as we're thinking about uh, the uh, idea of Valentine's Day. Uh, Valentine's Day, of course, going back to uh, 
uh, the time uh, of the uh, church fathers and those uh, that uh, were identified in the church as saints and those that uh, were martyred uh, many times because of their faith. And so uh, uh, Valentine's Day has its roots all the way back into that. And then, of course, as many holidays do, uh, the world gets involved and uh, uh, other things begin to come into play. And uh, it's not all about the little uh, uh, diaper clad angel with the bow that strikes you uh, in the heart for love. But uh, of course, uh, that seems to be what takes over uh, many times. But as we think about uh, love, uh, we think about the, the that sentiment, that emotion, that feeling that goes with Valentine's Day. And of course, uh, the root of love is God. God is love. Uh, and so as we look in the, the, the Bible, in the book of Romans, uh, Paul talks about that. He talks about the love that God has for us. Uh, and so that, that gift of God's love, uh, and of course, the ultimate uh, in Christ coming. So if we look at Romans chapter number five, uh, in light of that uh, topic, uh, the Bible tells us that God uh, showed his love for us. Romans chapter five and verse number eight uh, says, God proved uh, not that God had any need to prove anything. God created us uh, after Satan uh, entered the scene on, on, in the garden and uh, the deception that he played on Eve and, and Adam and, and their fall. And of course, all of humanity uh, then had the curse of sin upon us and all the consequences that that brings. Uh, and yet God's love still, after he created us in his own image, uh, God's love was uh, that he would uh, send a redeemer that he would have a plan, and he always had the plan, uh, that he would purchase us back, he would buy us back, he would redeem us, uh, that we wouldn't have to live under that penalty, we wouldn't have to, to face eternal judgment under the penalty uh, of sin. And so Paul comes along and he says in Romans chapter 5 and verse number 8, God proved his love, his, his own love for us, uh, and then he goes ahead to say, not that we deserved it, not when we were cleaned up and good and ready and and uh, after we had our life together, uh, but Romans chapter five and verse number eight, Paul says, God proved his love for us while we were still sinners. Think about that. Christ died for us when we were unlovable. Christ died for us. God sent his son. God in the flesh uh, came and, and, and died for us. Uh, a horrible death, uh, the most horrible death known to man uh, to show, to prove uh, that he would redeem us. Uh, so as we think about that, you know, you think about Valentine's Day, it's a time when uh, uh, men and women, they express their love for their uh, their boyfriend, girlfriend, for their wife, their husband, for their, uh, you know, all, all of that. We, we think of the things we do to express our love, you know, the, the most popular things are, you know, the flower shops are busy this time of year and and, and the candy sales are through the roof this time of year. And jewelry stores have specials because jewelry is a way of showing love. And, you know, I was thinking about this, that this, I think about it every year, I guess, at Valentine's Day, the, the gifts and how to express Valentine's. They say that uh, uh, there's just billions of cards. Uh, the greeting card industry says there's billions of cards that are sold and that are sent. And that doesn't include the, the little cards that the, the kids exchange in, in school at Valentine's Day. And I was thinking about all the gifts this year. And, you know, we, we've been married for 37 years now. And so the, the, the gifts have kind of gone from um, uh, flowers that are going to die and candy that neither one of us needs and jewelry that, you know, got a box full of that. So we're, we're more into the practical gifts. I think year before last, uh, uh, Donna got a, a chainsaw for, for Valentine's Day. And uh, I remember one year she got, a, I, I, I saw a memory the other day on Facebook that I'd got her a pair of work boots for Valentine's Day, but she really, really scored big this year. Uh, she, uh, uh, on Monday, uh, she broke our snow shovel. So she got a brand spanking new uh, uh, snow shovel, one of those fancy handled snow shovels. And, uh, and she was excited to get that. And then this morning, uh, the other half of her Valentine's Day gift, she's been out unloading salt out of the back of the truck. So, uh, uh, she's looking at me like, you know, I really, I really struck it big this year, but, uh, you know, you, you gotta show your love however you can. Uh, and, and when we think about love, uh, the practicality of love, uh, talk about practical, uh, God demonstrating his love for us while we were still sinners. I mean, the gift of God's son, uh, that's the proof of, of God's love. And, and when we think about that, you, you think about why, why does God love us? Why did God do that? Why, why did God feel compelled to do that? And again, what the scripture teaches us 
is, is that's the love is the very definition of God. That that's that describes God. If you if you were to say describe God's character in one word, and you come up with the word grace, and and you come up with the word mercy, and 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 you think of the things that describe God, and 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 inevitably, if you were to ask a, a crowd, a congregation, uh, describe God in one word, that word love would come into that discussion. First uh, John. Uh, John, as he was writing in, in, in his three little letters uh, near the end of the Bible there, in 1 John chapter 4 and verse number 8, uh, John says, the one who does not love does not know God. Think about that. Uh, somebody that th their life is, is, is modeled, their behavior is, is exhibited by uh, somebody that's just always into trouble and somebody that's always hateful and, and, and somebody that's just mean. And, and, and You know, you've met those people. And, and, and John says, those people that don't love, it's because they don't know God. And he went ahead to say at the end of that first John chapter four, number eight, he says, because God is love. That's the very definition of God, love. Uh, the, the, the love that compelled God to create us, uh, to create us in his image, uh, to create us to be in relationship with one another. It was all bound up in that, that word, that emotion, that sentiment of love. Uh, John, John also wrote in 1 John chapter 4 on down in verse number 16. He says, we, um, talking about God's children, he says, we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. And he, he, he again says, God is love. And then he goes ahead to say, the one who remains in love remains in God and God remains in him. So the very word love, the very emotion love, the very sentiment of love, uh, it is defined in, in the parameters there of God. And, and so when the need was there that man had sinned and, and the, the penalty, the judgment had already been set, uh, that, that the, the wages of sin is death, the eternal separation from God, the eternal dying in the fires of hell and never getting the job of dying done and God not wanting any of us to perish, God not wanting any of us to experience that then that God that is love in his perfect plan from the foundations of the world sent his son, God in the flesh, Jesus Christ, and Christ died for us. The whole Christmas story, the whole theme of, of, of the gift of baby Jesus and, and, and Jesus coming all points towards Good Friday, all points toward Golgotha. That person that died for us, a, a real person, a real human being, Jesus Christ, a, a real man, fully man, 100% man, born of Mary, lived for 33 years. And then that man, that itinerant preacher, that son of God, who we know the story of his ministry for those three years, his public ministry, and then his subsequent arrest and the mockery of a trial and standing before Pilate and Pilate questioning him, Pilate, the governor of Judea. And after Pilate finished questioning him and all of the accusations that had been brought against him by the Jews and this Roman governor, Pilate, he, he says, I can find no reason that this man should be sentenced to death. And yet Pilate, knowing as a political operative, if he didn't give the people what they wanted, that there was going to be a riot that was going to break out in Jerusalem. And of course, as a political guy, he wanted to try to keep the peace. And so he finally came up with what he thought was a plan. I'll give them a choice. I'll either give them this murderer, this criminal Barabbas, or I'll give them this innocent man that I find no fault in, Jesus Christ. And so you'll remember he asks the crowd, who would you have me to release? And you'll remember the mob began to shout. The mob, the people, the crowd, those that had watched Jesus and being caught up in that mob, they began to shout, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. And again, proof that this wasn't just something that just happened, that this wasn't just a uh, uh, an event of the day. Isaiah, God's prophet, 800 years before Jesus was ever born, Again, to prove God's love for us, 
to prove that this was God's plan. This was the purpose for Jesus coming into this world. Isaiah in chapter 53 and verse 3, he says, Jesus was despised. He was despised. He was rejected by men, a man of sorrows, a man of suffering. He, he, he knew what suffering was. He knew what, what sorrow was. And then Isaiah says in 53 and 3, he was, he was like someone that the people just turned their back on. They turned away from. And Isaiah says, 800 years before he was ever born, he says of Jesus, he was despised. The people just didn't value him because they didn't know who he, they didn't appreciate, they didn't know who he was. And so back to Pilate, the soldiers led Jesus away. And God proving his love for us, not just a martyr, not just any death, not just, well, that could have just happened. But Jesus was stripped of his clothes, tied to a whipping post, beaten, whipped with what they tell us is a, uh, they, they describe it as a cat of nine tails, the whip that in the end of that whip was was braided pieces of leather and into those strips of leather was pieces of bone and metal and, and anything sharp that could inflict damage. The, the Christian historian Eusebius, he says that those, those martyrs in the time of Jesus, that they were, they were scourged, they were beaten, and, and, and they, the, their backs were lacerated. He says that, that, that they, they were beaten so badly. The, the historian says they were beaten so badly that the innermost veins and arteries were exposed. The, he, he says the hidden inward parts of the body. And he describes it, the historian describes it in his text. He says it's to the point that their bowels and their organs were exposed to view. That's the beating that Jesus took. And remember, we're talking about the love that God had for us, the love that Jesus had for us. Jesus, the Son of God, at any time could have said, enough, stop, send the angels. I don't want to do this. I'm not doing this. There's got to be another way. And yet after that beating, the love that God had for us, the love that his son Jesus had for you, for me, the soldiers took an old robe they put that robe on that bloodied and beaten and torn and lacerated back. They, they, they took a, 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 a thorn bush, thorn trees, and they plaited a, row, a, a crown out of those thorns. And, and they, they forced that down onto his head to where those, those long thorns were forced into his brow to make the blood just run down his face. You see, they, they were making a mockery of this Christ who had acknowledged that he was the Son of God, that he was God come to earth to die for us, that he came because of his love for you, for me. And Isaiah in chapter 52, again, proof that this didn't just happen by, by, by coincidence, but proof that God had this plan because, again, Isaiah 800 years, 700 years before Jesus was born, in Isaiah 52, Isaiah prophesies. He tells ahead of time what's going to happen. And he says, just as many were as appalled at you. Talking about Jesus Christ. He says, Jesus' appearance was so disfigured. His, his, the King James Version says his visage was so destroyed. He didn't even look like a human being. You couldn't recognize him. His form did not resemble that of a human. And even to make matters worse, they gave him a, a staff to be like a scepter because he claimed to be a king. And the soldiers fell on their knees and they mocked him like they were paying homage to a king. And, and they cried out, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit on him. And remember, all of this time, he stripped naked in, in front of his mother and those that had followed him and all of the crowd. And Isaiah, again, in chapter 50, in verse number six, Isaiah says that the words of, of what Jesus would say are prophesied. I gave my back to those who beat me. How, uh, saying that God's love for us, Jesus' love for us compelled him. That he 
He willingly went through all of this. Talk about sacrificial love. He says, I didn't hide my face from the scorn or the spitting. In all of it, Jesus remained silent. Again, in chapter 53 of Isaiah, uh, Isaiah says he was, Jesus was oppressed. He was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. And just as Isaiah had prophesied, that's exactly how Jesus fulfilled the mission of the love that he, that God has for you, for me, while we were yet sinners. And Isaiah 53 and 7 says, like a lamb, like a lamb led to the slaughter. Like a sheep, he stood silent before the shears. He didn't open his mouth. There were those that declared Jesus' innocence, but Jesus never at that point defended himself. When Pilate would say, I find no fault in him. When, when Judas cried out, I betrayed innocent blood. When when the thief hanging on the cross with him said, this man has done nothing. When the centurion standing at the foot of the cross, watching all of this unfold, that Roman soldier said, truly, this was the son of God. And yet Jesus, beaten, mocked, spit running down his face, he took it all silently. First Peter chapter two says, when they hurled their insults at him, he, he didn't retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. You see, Christ's love for you compelled him to die willingly. Hebrews chapter nine and verse number 27, the scripture says, just as it appointed unto man once to die and after this, the judgment, that's the reason we're all gonna die. And because of that, if we're outside of salvation, if, we're, if we die and face that judgment lost without having our sins, having been forgiven through the blood of Jesus by what he did on Calvary, that's why he died. He died willingly. They didn't take his life. John chapter 10 and verse number 18. John again quotes the words of Jesus when, when Jesus was telling the disciples what was going to happen. He said, nobody, no one takes my life from me. John chapter 10. He says, I lay it down on my own. I have the right to lay it down and I have the right. I have the ability to take it up again. And then, he said, I have received this command from my father. And so that love compelled Jesus to die for you. He, he died for us, died for me, for you. Philippians 2 and 8 says he, Jesus humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to the death on a cross. He didn't experience just an ordinary death. He suffered an agonizing, cruel death. Christ died in humiliation. He died in agony. When you think about what the, the, the victim of crucifixion had to go through, being forced to carry their own cross to the place of execution would, would be torture enough. But then the beating that he had taken that we described, well, he, he was in no condition to carry that cross. In fact, the, the, the soldiers growing impatient with him had to, had to compel Simon of Cyrene to, to even help him to carry the cross. Mark says they, they brought him to the place of Golgotha, that, that place there that we know as Calvary, that place just outside the city gates because it was such a horrific death you couldn't even perform a crucifixion within the walls of the city. The, the crucifixion was so horrible that the Romans would not even allow a Roman citizen to die that way. They punished those that were not Roman citizens to die on a cross, but never a Roman citizen. Crucifixion, it was synonymous with, with horror, with shame, 
It was inflicted on slaves and bandits and prisoners of war and revolutionaries, just the, 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 the most outcasts of society, but never a Roman citizen. Uh, we've taken the cross and we've made it a, a, a piece of art. We've made it a piece of jewelry. We've made it to where we, we see the cross so often that we're, we're desensitized to what that cross really meant to, to those people in that time, that day, and that age, what the cross really signified that Jesus took that cross, our cross, hung on that cross to die in our place. And the way that he died, a man that knew no sin and took your sins and my sins. Again, Isaiah 53, the, the prophet Isaiah says in Isaiah 53 verses 5 and 6, he was pierced because of our transgressions, our sins, crushed because of our iniquities, yours and mine. The punishment of our peace was upon him. Those stripes on his back, that was for our healing. Isaiah goes ahead to say, we just all, we went astray like sheep. We just did our own thing. We, we turned our own way. But the Lord God punished his son, Jesus, punished him. God did that to him for the sins of us, you and me, because God loved us that much. So like Paul tells the Christians in the region of Rome, again, Romans chapter 5, and verses 6 and 8, he says, while we were sinners, while we were helpless, while we were still hopeless in our sins, at the appointed time, at the appointed moment, Christ died for the ungodly. And then Paul says something. He says, rarely will someone die for a good man. Rarely will somebody give their life for a just person. Oh, for a, a good person, perhaps someone might dare die. But God, proved his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, helpless, ungodly, sinners, without hope, Christ died for us. You hear the phrase that, that God helps those that can't help themselves. Romans chapter 5 right there teaches us that that, that God helps those who cannot help themselves. Powerless, helpless, hopeless. That is the nature of God's love. God's love, it's undeserved. We, we see that in Romans chapter 5. In the gospel, we, we discover that we're far worse off than we ever thought, than we ever dreamed while we were sinners, while we were hopeless, while we were helpless, while we were running headlong on our way to hell. In the middle of that, God, through Jesus, his only begotten son, died for us. That's an unequaled love. That's that's God's own love. You know, Jesus said, greater love is no man than this, that he laid down his life for his friend. John, John recorded that in John chapter 15. The, the, the pinnacle of human love is the sacrifice of somebody that would die for someone else. We, we think of our, our, our heroes that go off to war, and, and, and they know when they go, there's a high chance, a high probability that they will die. But you see, they love their country. They love their fellow man. They're they're, they're motivated by something bigger than themselves. And so the scripture teaches you might be willing to lay down your life for a loved one, but, but would you die for somebody that you didn't know? Would you die for somebody that wasn't your friend, for, for, for somebody that you didn't, didn't love? Again, rarely, Romans 5, rarely would someone die for a just person. Maybe for a good person, but, but rare. But God's love, you see that, that love of God is universal. John chapter 3 and verse 16 describes God's love. That, that, that Bible in a verse, God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son for you. When you read that verse and you say that, that God gave himself for the world and, and take the word world out and put your name in there. God, God loved Danny so much. God loved, and you put your name in there. God loved you by name so much that he was willing to die. And he did die for you. When we think of the cross of Calvary, when we think of the cross of Christ, when we think of the, the person that died on that cross, you know, Winston Churchill said after World War II, he says, never in the history of mankind has so many owed so much to so few. Never in the history of humanity has so many owed so much to one. But what is our response to that? I mean, you see that word love and we banty the word about, especially here at Valentine's Day and in our culture today and you, 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 you watch people's lives and you see how lightly we treat that emotion, that love, that word love. You see how lightly we, I mean, we love our car, we love our house, we love our dog, we, we love chocolate cake. Today, we love our blanket. I mean, all the things that we love. And, and in our English language, we have that one word love. But when the Bible was being written, when Jesus was walking the earth, that to the Greek, that word love they had different words for love. They uh, agape love, the love of God. Storge love, the, the parental, the protection kind of love. And, and whatever type of love they were talking about, they had a word for that. Phileo, that love, that brotherly love, that friendship love. And then there was the eros, romantic love, sexual love. And you take all of those forms of love and and the last three, the, the parental, the storge, the, the brother, the phileo, the romantic, the eros, those, those words for love have no point of reference without that first love, which is the love of God, agape. When we talk about the cross, when we talk about Jesus, and we read that in the Bible, the word in the original language there is agape, the love that God had for us, the love that Jesus had for us and, and what that love means. And God knowing, Jesus knowing, Romans chapter six and verse 23, the, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, the love of God, the love of Christ is eternal life. What about that love? We, we love him, not because we on our own love him, but we love him because he first loved us. The, 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 the Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 4, we, we love him because he first loved us. So first John also talks in chapter 5 about the love of, the love of God. He says that, that our love for him is, is we obey his commands. We're, we're obedient to him. That's how we show our love to him. Jesus showed his love for us in a horrific death on Calvary. And our return is that we obey his commands, that we love others. Again, John in 1 John chapter 4, he says that since God so loved us because God is love, we ought to also love one another. That means loving those that you don't agree with. Loving those that, that perhaps aren't always able to repay you. Remembering what Jesus prayed on the cross after they had beaten him, after they had pushed that crown on his forehead with those thorns and they, they spit on him and they stripped him and all that they, they did in forcing him to carry that cross and then nailing him to that cross and then lifting that cross up and dropping it in that hole and, and all of those hours of agony on that cross and when he wanted something to drink. They gave him the vinegar and, 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 and just the torture that he went through. And on that cross, the love 
the definition of love, agape love, the love of God. And Jesus looks out over that crowd and when he had to push himself up on his feet just to breathe because the nature of death on a cross was asphyxiation. The nature of, of, of the death was you, you suffocated. You couldn't breathe unless you were able to push yourself up. And, and so unable to, to push himself up just to get the words out, Jesus looks out over that crowd and, and Jesus prays the prayer, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Talk about loving your enemies. Valentine's Day. Love. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me. He loved us so much that he paid the penalty for your sins. So today, on this Valentine's Day 2021, if you've never asked him to forgive you of your sins, if you've never accepted who Christ was, what Christ did on the cross of Calvary, if you've, if you've never understood, I, I, I consider myself fortunate. I, I grew up in a home with love, with parents that loved me, siblings that loved me. I've had a good life with a wife that's loved me, children that's loved me, a church family that's loved me. I've, I've known what love is, but I realize there are those around us that they've grown up in abusive situations. They've, they've grown up in in homes, they've grown up in situations, they've, they've, they've grown up without parents that, that even knew the meaning of love, and they grew up without a loving environment, and, and people that don't know what love is. When you realize that God loves you while you were yet a sinner, and if you've never asked him to forgive you of your sins, if you've never accepted, if you've never believed, if, you, if you've never trusted your eternal security of a home in heaven in the fact that God does love you, did love you, Jesus died for you, oh, I urge you today to just bow your head and to ask God, because he loves you, to forgive you of your sins. And the Bible tells us in 1 John that he's faithful, he's true, and if we ask him to forgive us instantaneously, our sins are forgiven. And he forgives us because, not of who we are, but because of his love. And sometimes we may be saved, but we've, because of life and because of everything and circumstances, we we may have gotten out of relationship with God, backslidden, whatever term you want to use, but you're just not in that relationship with Christ, with God that you were when you were first saved. And you you realize that and, and you realize you're far off from God. I, I remember years ago seeing a bumper sticker that said, if you feel God's far off, guess who moved? God's the same always. God doesn't change. God hasn't moved, but perhaps you've moved away from God in your relationship. You've grown cold in your relationship. You don't pray to God like you once did. You don't read God's word like you once did. And, and you, you, you just sense you're far off from God. And again, God's love never changes. God's love is the same. And so if you, you feel like, well, I, I know that I was saved, but I'm, I, I just don't have the relationship with God. I just don't, I, I don't feel the, the closeness with God. And I so want to have that. You desire that, that relationship with God, that closeness with God. Again, you just pray the prayer that, that God, I'm a sinner. God, I've, I've, I've gotten out of fellowship with you. God, it's me. I've moved. And, and whatever circumstance, God, just forgive me and God, restore your salvation to me. I encourage you to pray that prayer. And if you pray that prayer, I, 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 I wish you would reach out to me on Facebook, Messenger, text, Get a hold of one of us, somebody that you know that you've got confidence in and, and let them know the decision you've made so they can help you to be involved in a local Bible-believing church. Have that fellowship of, of people around you to help you because that relationship with, with God is so important. It's so important. Thank you for being with us today. I thank you for watching the broadcast and share it. Share it on Facebook. The YouTube will be up this afternoon on the church's YouTube channel. 
If you call North Livingston your church home, I would remind you that we've been out a couple of weeks now. So uh, if you want to send your tithes, you can do that. Send them to, to uh, P.O. Box 69, uh, North Livingston Baptist Church, P.O. Box 69, Hampton, 42047. Again, if you've got a need, a prayer need, a prayer concern, if, you, if you're not comfortable making that public here on the comment section, private message me, Danny Sterick. You can find me on Facebook. A private message here on the church's page or send me a personal text. My number is area 270-969-4247. You, you comment. Just let me know privately if you need to. We want to pray with you. We want to pray for you. If you have a need, if you have a concern, if you, you, you have a, any type of need that you would have, just reach out to us. Again, thank you for being with us today and we're about to close out and Again, be safe, stay warm. If you need help, reach out to us. We, we want to be there for you and, and help you any way we can. We love you. God loves you. Have a great day. Father, we thank you for our time together. God, we thank you for the technology of our ability to broadcast when we can't be together. God, we pray for those that work out in this elements, this weather. God, those that take care of our roads, those that work in the hospitals, the doctor's offices, and God, those that... Uh, uh, have the positions of the grocery stores where they have to be at work. God, we pray for their safety. God, we pray for those that uh, may not have the finances, the resources to keep heat on. And Father, if there's one hearing us today that's in that situation or knows of somebody, reach out to us. God, we want to be your hands. We want to be your feet. God, we love you. We thank you for your love for us. God, we again pray for our country, our churches, our community. Pray for one another. Lift us each up, as the Bible tells us to encourage, to edify, and lift each other up. Thank you again for today's broadcast. In the name of Jesus, we pray. God bless you all.